gostaria. I'd like to salute President Mamafosa, President of South Africa. I'd also like to give my greetings to the ministers, the NDP president, Kamar Dilma Rousseff, also the business people here in attendance. And I'd like to, above all, salute the South African government for hosting this business forum. I'd like to also say how pleased I am for sharing this event with the other leaders of the BRICS countries. I would also like to thank all the business people in attendance, particularly the Business Council Board, which is celebrating its 10th anniversary. Establishing partnerships among the private sectors is a very relevant dimension for the BRICS and which gives life and continuity to relations between the countries. Since the first summit of heads of state and government, our share in the global economy has been increasing. We have surpassed the G7 already, accounting for 32% of the world GDP in purchasing power parity. Forecasts indicate that emerging and developing markets are the ones that will show the highest growth rate in the coming years. While According to the IMF, while industrialized countries are expected to grow by an average of 2.7% in 2022, dropping to 1.4% to 2024, the projected growth for developing countries is of 4% for this period. This shows that the dynamism of the economies in the global south and the BRICS is its driving force. Brazil's, the BRICS, uh, international foreign uh, stock uh, increased 370 percent between 2022 and 2029 and 2020. Two, and in today, almost 400 companies from the block operate in Brazil. After the six years of standing still, Brazil is going to create quality jobs again. It's going to fight poverty again and will increase the income of Brazilian families. Two weeks ago, I presented the new PAC growth acceleration program. The plan provides for resuming suspended projects, accelerating ongoing projects, and also selecting new projects. It is a comprehensive program with many opportunities that may be of interest of investors from BRICS countries. We hope to mobilize $340 billion for modernizing our logistics infrastructures with investments in motorways, railways, waterways, ports and airports. We will also give priority to the generation of solar and wind power, as well as biomass, ethanol and biodiesel. We have immense potential for generating green hydrogen. We shall establish partnerships between government and the business community in all areas through concessions, public-private partnerships and direct contracts. In order for investment to grow again and drive development, we need to ensure more credibility, predictability and legal certainty as well as political and social certainty for the private sector. For this reason, I have advocated the idea of greater financial integration where we could have a new reference unit which would not replace our national currencies. <coughs> the financing needs, the unmet financing needs of developing countries remains high. The lack of a substantial reform from traditional financial institutions limit the volume and the credit modes offered by existing banks. The decision of establishing the new development bank represented a milestone in effective collaboration among emerging economies. 
our joint bank must be a global leader in the financing of projects that address the most pressing challenges of our time. By diversifying payment sources in local currencies, increasing its partner network and its membership, NDB, constitutes a strategic platform to promote cooperation between developing countries. In this strategy, engagement with the African Development Bank will be central to this. At the multilateral level, the BRICS stood out for being a force that works in favor of a fairer, more predictable, equitable global trade. We cannot accept agree new colonialism that imposes trade barriers and discriminatory measures under the guise of protecting the environment. As of December, Brazil will hold the G20 presidency. The presence of three BRICS members in the G20 Troika will be a great opportunity for us to move forward on issues of interest to the Global South. We already have South Africa's participation, but the group's representativeness may be increased with the entry of the African Union and other countries of the continent. It's just a water break. I've been talking about developing and then suddenly, you know, I miss the main important source of life, water. Dear friends, upon taking office as president of my country, again, I am resuming the guidelines of Brazilian foreign policy. We started to rebuild South American integration. We have resumed our partnerships with the US, China, and the European Union. We hosted the summit of the Amazon countries. Uh, we still had to return to Africa. It is unacceptable that in 2022, Brazil's trade with Africa has dropped by one third when compared to 2013, when it was almost $30 billion. Trade flow with Africa still corresponds to only 3.5% of Brazil's foreign trade. Our trade agreement network is still in its infancy. Existing agreements with Southern Africa and Egypt date from my second term. Today, over 65% of Mercosur exports to Africa went to African countries with which there is no agreement in force. There is plenty of room to grow. In addition to a past that unites us, we also share a common vision of the future. In my first two terms, the African continent was a priority for Brazil. I have made 12 trips to Africa and have been to 21 countries. Brazil is back on the continent where it should never have left. Africa has vast opportunities and enormous potential for growth. To discuss the relaunch of trade with the continent, Brazil brought together the heads of the trade promotion sectors of all our representations in African countries here in Johannesburg last June. Africa is building an ambitious free trade zone project. 54 countries, 1.3 billion people with over $3 trillion in GDP in this continent, which is the youngest in the world from an age perspective and will be the most popular by 2100, offers countless opportunities for Brazilian products such as food and beverages, oil, iron ore, vehicles and iron and steel manufacturers. Africa has 65% of the arable land available in the world and it is 
has a strong vocation for being an agricultural powerhouse with the capacity to feed its people and offer global food security solutions. Combining investment and technology, Brazil has developed modern tropical agricultural techniques that can be successfully replicated in Africa. Through the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, we have turned the Cerrado into an area of high agricultural productivity, and we can replicate this experience in the African savanna. My government has also resumed public policies to support family farming, essential to fight food insecurity and hunger that affects our continent. The More Food program, which I relaunched last June, allows small farmers to have access to financing, to purchase tractors, tools, and harvesters. As in the past, a version of the More Food program for food should be resumed as another aspect of Brazilian self-self cooperation. Africa is also at the heart of the digital and energy transitions. Internet coverage already reaches most of the African population and digital innovation centers and financial technology services companies are multiplying, strengthening the Brazilian health complex strengthening may lead to ample opportunities for cooperation with South America. The African continent has important ore reserves such as, you know, essential ore such as lithium or cobalt that will play a strategic role so that we do not remain as exporters of primary products. We must make the most of this opportunity to forge an integration of our production chains and add value to the goods and services that we produce in a sustainable manner. Africa is the region of the world that emits the least amount of greenhouse gases. However, this does not mean that it does not have to face the most perverse consequences of global warming, such as droughts, floods, fires, and cyclones. Brazil and many African countries have comprehensive plans to renew their energy mixes. We share the responsibility of caring for tropical rainforests and preserving biodiversity. We share the common concern of fighting the desertification process. Environmental and ecosystem services provided by rainforests to the world, they must be paid for in a fair and equitable manner. Social diversity products can generate jobs and income and offer alternatives to the predatory exploitation of natural resources. These are the pillars of the ecological transition plan that we will launch soon. For our economic and productive integration to flourish, it will be necessary to increase sea and air connections between the two sides of the Atlantic. It is inexplicable that we do not have direct flights between Sao Paulo and Johannesburg, Cairo or Dakar, essential for increasing the flow of people, trade and tourism. Therefore, I believe it to be very important. The proposal made by the BRICS Business Council of establishing a multilateral agreement of air services for the group with the main national transport and aviation authorities from the countries. Very relevant proposal because the BRICS have a unique chance of shaping the global development path. You, business people, you're part of this effort. Together, our countries make up a third of the global economy. This relevance will grow with the admission of new full members and dialogue partners. Collaboration between the public and private sector is vital for harnessing this potential and achieving lasting results. Thank you very much and good luck.